Hi, I'm Mr. Glass. I'm going to be the event supervisor for uh, Trajectory this year. Uh, the goal of this video is to explain a couple of things. One, how to, or what you need for uh, the event, uh, how to set up the event, and then uh, how to uh, run the event. All right. A couple things that you need uh, to run the event is just a couple uh, measuring devices. Uh, you need a uh, five gallon bucket. Uh, these buckets can be bought at um, Nards or any big store. Uh, I bought this for about three dollars and sixty some on uh, cents. Uh, one thing I had to do, I had to drill a hole in the bottom and I'll explain that later, but uh, the hole in the bottom will help me uh, place the bucket at the exact location where I need for the bucket. Uh, other things I need, uh, rollout tape is a very, very handy thing. Uh, I bought this off of Amazon for, I think, around $13 or so. Uh, this is going to be something that's going to help uh, lay out the track, and then you could also be able to use it when it comes time for uh, measuring the targets. Uh, nice thing that you could also use is you've got these little tiny rollout tapes. These things are nice and handy when it comes time for uh, measuring uh, the targets. A lot of times uh, you get these things free at, at different locations. Okay? Uh, meter stick is good. Uh, if you don't have any of these devices and you are like filming this at home, uh, please come up with uh, valid measuring uh, devices. If you have a tape measure that's in the garage and to do conversions, uh, that's, that's not the most ideal situation, but it's something that, uh, it's something that you've got. Okay? Uh, the other thing uh, that I like to use is the uh, Blues Painter's Tape. With the Blues Painter's Tape, uh, I can lay down uh, the track and have the mark. The Blue Painter's Tape, uh, you won't mar up uh, any kind of gym floors uh, when, you, when you pull it up. Uh, other things that I like to use, <coughs> if you have access to a 3D printer, uh, we created these little tabs here, and it's got a raised point, and so this way I can have that as my uh, target location. Uh, if you want to use some other kind of small device uh, to mark your target, uh, that is a uh, great thing. Okay, uh, even by putting a piece of tape on the floor underneath the material was a big X. That works too, but at least with this I've got it raised up so the competitors can, uh, can see it uh, uh, from afar. Okay. Uh, when it comes time for the materials that I've got for the targets, basically what I've got is I bought uh, a roll of uh, basically the painters uh, plastic that you put down. Uh, I've done several of these this year and I'm still on my first uh, first package. I've cut this to over a meter in size and that way I know I've got uh, overflow with it. And then what I've done is I bought some kitty litter uh, for the target itself. And so when the ball impacts the uh, area I'll have a pretty good indication of where uh, it lands. Uh, sand works. Uh, personally, I like the kitty litter. It's, it's just an easy, uh, an easy uh, cleanup. It doesn't fly around as much as the sand. Yeah, and that does as well. All right. Uh, when it comes time for uh, the track itself, oh, I want to make sure that I'm at least a meter in uh, both directions for this. So I could go this way, and I could go that way. And I've got uh, I've got some pretty good uh, coverage. Okay. You can see that raised point in the center. Yeah, and, and I got the raised the point. Exact target. Yep. And so. Kitty litter. Yep. And so when I place the tape measure down, I've got it measured from my center point, and I basically used my straight line all the way down when it came time for uh, creating the track. Okay. Uh, let's go through parts of the track down here. Okay, uh, one area that I'm standing in is going to be the launch area. The launch area is basically one meter by 1.5 meters 
uh, this way. So when I place the track down, I end up covering uh, that one meter part. Uh, same thing when it comes time for here. I've got my one meter and if I have another meter stick, uh, I can measure out a meter and a half, a meter and a half from uh, that point. The key part about the launch area is they'll be able to place their device anywhere within uh, this particular box. Uh, outside of this box, you'll see that I've got a, a piece of tape over here, uh, over here as well, and behind this is your 75 centimeter safety line. So when they uh, trigger the device, they should be on the other side of that particular line. Uh, one thing that I've also done is I've created a, a box that is 60 centimeters by 60 centimeters. It's not required in the rules to do this, but what I like to do is I like to be able to uh, work through these quickly and by creating this, it's simply here, place your device within this box and you can uh, quickly get two of, the, uh, two of the measurements and then the other measurement can quickly be seen that we're within uh, 60 centimeters on, uh, on the vertical. Mm -hmm. So that's Very it. handy if you're doing an in-person tournament as yep. a judge. Yeah, in-person it's great because you can uh, get those uh, set up very quickly. All right. Now, when it comes time for uh, creating the track or the lengths in the track, uh, if you are doing a uh, virtual one, uh, the individuals will tell you what the distances are. Uh, so you'll measure it from your uh, start point uh, all the way down. In this case, uh, we've got this measured at uh, two and a half meters to this point here. There is on this version or on the, the near target, there is no left or right. It's a straight line. Okay. When it comes time for the far target, uh, for this one, I've got it set up at six meters, and then I have it uh, one meter uh, to the left. And so I've got my tape measure going uh, from that point all the way to here, and then I used a meter stick to come over this point for that spot right there. Uh, when it comes time for the uh, bucket challenge, uh, the bucket challenge can be anywhere, uh, two meters to either side, uh, uh, anywhere from two to eight meters through here, so there's no uh, half increments. It can be anywhere where, uh, where we want to set it. Uh, for this one, I set it at uh, 7.3 meters uh, from the start. And then I went over uh, 50 centimeters uh, to the to the right. Uh, when, it, when they do get the opportunity for the bucket challenge, they have to be within uh, 500 millimeters of the target point on their first shot. On their first shot, okay. And uh, then that way, it allows them to have the uh, allows them to have the second shot, okay. Uh, other things that is uh, super important that could be uh, very handy uh, for the device or for running this. Uh, you'll be able to find the rules online. I always like to have a printed copy for uh, reference. Uh, the other thing uh, that will be very handy when it comes time for uh, running this event, uh, even if you do this at home, this is a good thing to print out. Uh, this is a score guide that is on the Science Olympiad uh, webpage. Uh, what this does is this basically shows how uh, event supervisors will uh, grade your device. Okay, uh, and so it'll run through these key parts that uh, event supervisors are uh, looking forward to. Okay, so this part concludes the. Place in the bucket. What's that? You want to talk about placing the bucket? Oh yes, place the bucket. Okay, when it comes time for placing the bucket, so they get within the 500 uh, millimeters or 50 centimeters of the target. Please tr measure everything in millimeters. Uh, they want to go for the challenge. Then you can take the bucket, and then uh, I've got an X placed right here on the blue tape, and I can take my hole, and I can place that 
over that spot and I can see that X in the center and now I know uh, where that's located. Okay, that concludes the uh, setup of the track. Uh, the next video will be uh, how do we actually uh, run the event. Okay, now that we've got the uh, triggering device, let's go ahead and put the triggering device on the... You don't have to set up for a launch here, but I just want to make sure that you're going to be able to stand at least 75 centimeters away. And so, yeah, I can see that the string definitely carries well over that 75 uh, centimeter mark, and we're, uh, we're in good shape for that. Okay, next up, uh, what kind of uh, device are you going to launch, or what kind of ball are you going to launch? Uh, we have our container over there. Okay, we've got a container over here, and... For 2.5, or... No, it just tell them, show them the balls. What do we got? We got, we got a racket ball. ball. Okay, the racket ball's good. And what yeah. else we got in there? We got a ping, ping pong, pong ball. ball. That's good. Okay, it looks like we got a Stuck tennis ball. We got a tennis ball and a practice golf ball. Okay, the key thing is you got a practice golf ball. There they go. Uh, okay, so all these devices or all these projectiles here, when they bounce on the ground, they're soft at bouncing on the ground. Okay, that is the key thing. We don't want to have any kind of device. We don't actually want to use a golf ball itself because when a golf ball gets launched, it's a hard material. It can damage. Uh, it can damage the floor. So okay. when you're when it talks about the golf ball and the rules, it's talking about a practice one, yep. not an actual golf yep. ball. Yep. And so all the <coughs> devices that they they potentially have are going to be uh, possible. Now, if they actually do have a golf ball, I'd say, hey guys, uh, you guys have a golf ball. You can't use the golf ball, but you could use any other uh, ones that you've got. Okay. Uh, next up, the launch device is designed and operated in such a way not to damage the floor. And so when I look at this device, it looks like they've got uh, material that keeps it from there. And then if you're unsure, ask them, say, what keeps this from uh, marring up the floor? Okay. Uh, next up, I'm looking for electronic uh, components that are uh, part of the device. And I see nothing with batteries or wires or anything like that. So we're electrical free on, uh, on the device. Okay? Now they may use uh, calculators in their uh, calculation, but I don't see anything electrical on the device itself. And so that makes uh, all the construction parameters in, uh, in good shape. Okay? Uh, another thing I see is they've got safety glasses on. They've had their safety glasses on. Uh, the entire time. Now when it comes time for uh, them running the event or them running their device, uh, basically they end up having two shots at the near target and they've got two shots at the uh, far target. Uh, the rules say that you can choose which target you go for first. So if you want to go for the far and first or you want to go for the near first, that's fine. The key things that you want to do is you want to be able to uh, tell the event supervisors uh, before the launch which one you're aiming at. That way we know uh, which one to, uh, to look for. All right? All right. Uh, so next up, when it comes time for the competition, uh, I've got two spots here. I've got a near target and a far target. I've got a launch one and a launch two. And uh, basically the first part is making sure that they're with outside of the 75 centimeters. The second part uh, is basically that when the device is all done, it ends up back within the launch area. Okay, so I want to keep my eye to see if anything has come out of uh, the uh, launch zone. All right. You guys ready to yep. launch a projectile? We're we'll going with this short target. Okay, going to go with this short target. Okay. Also, you know, make sure you do let them know uh, the distances uh, uh, beforehand. Okay. And then what we're going to do is once we're once we're ready for this, we're going to uh, start a timer. Uh, that timer. Uh, they're going to have eight minutes to uh, run the competition. 
Uh, what I like to do is, prior to getting uh, completely started, uh, asking uh, the competitors if they got any questions before uh, before we start. Okay, if you have any questions. All right, so I'm going to start your eight minutes, and you guys can start now. So as the person running the camera, I'm going to verify that the boys are behind the line when they shoot. They are allowed to go downfield to help line up, but when they shoot, they've got to be behind the lines, Okay, which I've got them behind the lines. And then before they shoot, I'm going to come back here, if this is a virtual tournament, and I'm going to stand and make sure I've got the device and the target both in. And you guys ready? Yes, we are. All right. Three, two, one. All right, very good. All right, so basically here's the location where it landed. What I'm going to do is I'm going to measure from uh, this center point to my target point. And then I'm also going to stop the time. Uh, while I do uh, this part of the measurement. And so that ends up being right at uh, 15 centimeters, but I'm not going to write down 15 centimeters. I'm going to write down 150 because that would be 150 <laughs> centimeters. So 150 millimeters. I'm sorry, 150 millimeters. That's correct. So that's 150 for that, which makes them within the 500 millimeters, which means if they would like to go for the bucket, we'll go for the bucket. Okay, they're going to go for the bucket. Jake, you want to get your ball since it rolled down the hallway? Okay, okay so when it comes time for uh, placing the bucket on here, I'm going to place this over the X so I know I've got it there. Uh, since they're Working on their uh, device, I'm going to start the time again. Is the time started again? Time started again. Okay. <laughs> Once again, it's 7.3 meters, uh, half a meter to the so. right. Once again, he can target as best as he can. Okay. All right. Now for this guy's, what we're when it comes time for measurements for this thing, basically what we're looking for is to see if it hits the bucket or if it goes in the bucket. There are no other measurements uh, for this. Okay, so that's the key thing. So you don't have to measure how close it got to the bucket. We're, we're going so for I'm that. So I'm going to verify the boys are behind the line as the camera person. And I'm going to come down range. And again, I'm going to get to where I can see the bucket. And 
the device, all in frame. All right, there's a miss. And so in that case, uh, part of their uh, launch, uh, when it comes time for the uh, paperwork, they went for the, their true for number seven, so they did uh, actually go for the uh, bucket. But when it comes time for the other two items, uh, that will be a false and a false, okay? Uh, what we were really hoping for was, we were hoping for the ball to actually go uh, inside the bucket and strike the bottom of the bucket, okay? Uh, most times the balls end up remaining in the bucket, but they're pretty obvious when they're, uh, when they actually do strike uh, within, uh, when they do actually strike within the, uh, the bucket, all right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the bucket to the side, and now we're ready for uh, the other run. How far is the far target? The far target Seven. is uh, six meters and one meter to the left. Okay. <coughs> now, part of this uh, event is looking at uh, their charts and their chart scores. Uh, or I'm sorry, looking at their charts and uh, the diagrams, uh, there is a uh, spot here where you can put in the uh, information from that. Uh, when it comes time for the graphs and tables, uh, they want to make sure that they have more than one variable in there. Uh, when it comes time for another one, you want to have at least 10 data points uh, for the data series. When I've graded some of some people's uh, work, they just have a smooth line graph. And if they use that, I have no reference for data points. And so if you have a table with that, I can figure out that, hey, you do have uh, 10 data points with that. So that's one thing that a lot of people have, uh, have missed. All right. We're not ready yet. Okay. You guys are fine. Uh, another thing is, uh, you can have up to uh, four different uh, graphs or tables. You just have to make sure that those tables are uh, different from each other. Okay, you can't have one table and one graph show the same data. You want to have something uh, something different. Go ahead. Okay, All right. we're behind the line. Yep. Again, I'm gonna, as the camera person, if this were a virtual tournament, I'm gonna come down. I'm going to get behind the target, and I'm going to get them in frame. Okay. Three, two, one. All right. Since this target went out of the zone and landed in this particular location, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to borrow a little piece of tape here, and I'm going to mark this with a uh, piece of tape, and then I'll be able to measure from uh, the center point to that, which gets me to, let's see, that would be 77.7 uh, seven, uh, centimeters. So that would be 777 uh, millimeters. So that's 777. Uh, since they are outside of the 500 meter mark, uh, they don't have the option for uh, the bucket. So you guys can set up for your uh, second attempt. Uh, also, as I was mentioning about the chart scores, uh, you do want to have a labeled device or picture with some labels on there so we know what's going on with your device. Uh, also, uh, when it comes time for two example calculations, uh, I think some people may be confused about the example calculations. What I'm looking for when it comes time for example calculations is if you did any kind of math problems to it, uh, you could put that in there to say how did we get, you know, for this case, how did you get to the uh, six meter one, uh, I'm sorry, 
one meter uh, offset. Okay, both boys are behind the line. Are you guys ready? Yep. You're ready. Three, two, one. All right. That hit at this particular point right there. there I'm going to bring that there and so that is uh, 48.5 or 485 uh, millimeters so 485 okay uh, one thing that I also like to do is when I'm done with the we're, we're done with the competition uh, we did that in seven minutes and 24 seconds so we're within the uh, eight minute mark uh, key thing is make sure you do pause when it comes time for uh, measuring. Uh, one thing I do like to do is uh, at the end of the day, I like to make sure I go through the information with them. So you guys operated safely, so we're good on that. Uh, there is no construction parameters here. Uh, here's your launch. We had 150 for the first. The failed target on the second. Uh, the other. Uh, your FAR target, we had 777, we were good on that, uh, 485 for the second uh, target. Uh, some people like to have them sign it uh, as a little signature. Whatever you'd like to do is, is fine, but it's important that they get to see what the, uh, the numbers are. Okay? Now, I don't have the complete numbers until I plug them into the computer, and that's fine. They can go back and they can use those numbers to uh, to figure that uh, information out. Okay, uh, a couple other key things that I want to point out. Uh, each time that they pulled the trigger on this, the uh, it did launch. Uh, if they would pull this trigger and the thing would not operate, that is not a launch. Okay, they can get in and do what they need to do. Now, if they are working with it and you know the trigger went and nobody's ready, well then that's a uh, false launch and that, that actually counts as uh, one of the launches. But if it just is stuck there and hasn't done anything, uh, they can still uh, get that in there. Uh, with that, uh, this concludes uh, the video on how to run the, uh, run the device. Uh, thank you very much. Hopefully it helped.